Hey, what's up? I'm Russ and this is Dapper Dividend. So a little bit of a different video here. I have a story to share with you. This is the story of how I became a dividend growth investor. And the way I'm going to do this is there's no script. There's going to be no editing, no cuts, no music, no B-roll. It's me, baby, live without a wire. So whatever goof ups you hear me make that stay in in because I just want to share my story with you about how I became a dividend growth investor. So this story really begins in the summer, early summer of 2017, when I wanted to take more control of the money that I was investing. I had been investing into a 401k through my employer since starting in about 2003. But I don't know, I just wanted to I wanted to have more control over, you know, feel like I was growing my money more than it just going into this black hole of this 401k where I didn't even see the money because it was pre-tax. So I wanted to do something different. And this is what began it all. So I asked Uncle Google, uh, where can I invest my money? And one of the things that came up was acorns. Now, you've heard me talk about acorns on the channel and acorns is great for completely passive investors and it did what it said it was going to do. I think it grew uh, my money after about a year-ish, almost a year. I had, um, I think, a couple thousand. It wasn't much. But for me at the time, it was a lot. And I did that until I wanted to be even more hands-on because the ETFs were just too passive. It wasn't as uh, exciting uh, as investing in a individual company. So I wanted to take it a step further and invest into individual companies. So went back to Uncle Google and looked for where I could buy individual stocks. Now, uh, growing up in the in the 90s, I was in uh, the Navy. I got out in 1999. And I thought about this when everybody was, it was the tech bubble at the time when anything with a dot com was taking off. But the thing I didn't like at the time was with, I remember I looked into E-Trade and E-Trade was 19.99 in both directions, uh, meaning to place an order, it was 19.99 and to sell, it was 19.99. So you had to make about $20 on a trade just to break even. And I didn't like that. I, I didn't feel like I knew enough and I never looked into it any further. So I wanted something low cost and boy, did I find it. I found Robin Hood. So yes, me, I know I knocked Robin Hood, but I was a Robin Hoodie, Hooder, Robin Hooder, whatever you want to call it. I started buying penny stocks. I closed acorns, put my money into Robin Hood, and I thought I was wasting money spending like, you know, I don't know, a hundred bucks on Johnson & Johnson. I could get one share of Johnson & Johnson, or I could get you know, a thousand shares of something that was just so much cheaper, something that was 10 cents. And I went that route. I bought penny stocks. I was trying to trade penny stocks and it didn't work out that well. There was a couple hits, nothing big. But most of the time when I was finding the big moves, as they say, when you find something that already ran up in price and you're buying, you're probably one of the last people in and that uh, pretty much kept happening to me. So this, let's fast forward to April of 2018. My birthday's in April, and I was having a few drinks with some friends to celebrate my birthday, and an acquaintance uh, told me about MoviePass. Now, I don't know if you remember MoviePass. MoviePass was a, um, a service, a ticketing-based service, an app, where you would pay them a flat fee. I think it was $9.95 at the time, and you would get to see unlimited movies for the entire month. You would get, but it was one a day. So one a day for the whole month, $9.95, which was insane at the time. So lots of people were jumping at that. And he said, dude, Helios and Matheson, they own MoviePass. They used to be like 35 bucks a share, and now they're four. He's like, you got to jump all over that. They're going to be going back up. We're going to make bank. So to treat myself for my birthday, the next time the market opened, I bought $100 worth of Helios and Matheson, a data analytics company, getting into the movie business. 
big red flag. And that was the very first time that I learned the importance of really skeptically looking at companies that are merging or acquiring and getting into a business that they don't know. Kind of think AT&T, they're a telecom business that was getting into movies and television with uh, buying Warner Media. We saw how that worked out. And that's always something, as a side note, to keep an eye on when you're buying, like if uh, Altria is buying another cigarette company that's smaller, you know, hey, it didn't work out with Juul. But anyway, let's not get too far off the path here. So I was buying, I bought $100 worth of Helios and Matheson. And then they started dropping. That was April. They kind of had financial troubles. They kept sinking more money into MoviePass. And more people were starting to question the finances and the fundamentals of the company and what was going on. Funny business was popping up with Helios and Matheson. I think they were, I don't know, canceling, not letting people cancel their account. There was crazy rumors and stuff going on. Point is, in August of 2018, this all kind of hit a crescendo when they suspended the the flat rate um, unlimited plan, I believe it was, and people started jumping ship. They started bailing on Movie Pass. That should have been my cue when the subscribers are leaving, when the people that buy your product or service start leaving in droves as an investor. It's probably time to get out, but I didn't because I kept seeing that my negative what my in the red money was just getting bigger and bigger. So I kept putting more money in. They kept saying, we'll figure it out. I listened to them. I'd buy more. And all the way up until August, like we said. So, uno momento, por favor. Yeah, buddy. So <laughs> anyway, what were we talking about? Ah, yes. So behind the board on me, 3 a.m. This is very important and very critical to the story. This is the turning point. This is when the dividend growth investing all began. So what happened was the pre-market opens up in New York and on the East Coast at 4 a.m. So that's 3 a.m. here in Chicago in the Midwest. Now it's low volume, but you kind of get a flavor of what a stock might be doing or the market as a whole might be doing for that day starting at 3 a.m. So because I had been buying and averaging down, I was just so damn sure that one day Helios and Matheson was going to have like a 15, 20% jump. And when that happened, I was going to cash out, get back to even, but always know that the further negative you go on something like that, the harder it is to get back to even back to zero. Now, I don't know if you've ever been to a casino or if you gamble, but there's this, you get bit with the gambling bug. For me, it only happened once really, but it's that feeling in the pit of your stomach when you've lost a bunch of money and now it's not fun playing anymore because you want to get that money back. So you know you should leave and get out and just cut your losses, but you think, well, the ATM's there. If I just, if I just get more money and gamble more money, I, I'm bound to hit big and get all my money back. And that usually never works. So I'm lying in bed with that feeling in the pit of my stomach. Do I put more money in? What do I do? It's 3 a.m., 3.30 a.m. in the morning. I'm watching the stock price drop again. My wife, my kids, everybody's asleep. And I'm up, losing sleep, nervous, uh, sick to my stomach because I keep putting more money in. And then the next day it's losing. And I didn't want to do that anymore. So I Googled. I asked Uncle Google uh, how to, uh, for a better way. So let me see. I, I backed up here. Um, I was thinking about uh, my grandfather and what he used to do was invest. And what I didn't get to do was really dive into what he bought and why he bought it. So I was a young man out of the Navy in 1999. And as a teenager, I remember hearing him talk about his investments, but I was too busy doing those things that teenage boys do and young men just out of the Navy do what they're preoccupied with. So I do remember him though, talking about his blue chip companies he owned like Walmart, uh, Disney, Johnson and Johnson, 
and AT&T. Now, he said he liked them because they were strong companies and they paid good dividends. Now, that's something I thought about. So now, now we can get to the Uncle Google part. <laughs> so I asked Uncle Google uh, dividends. What are dividends? And then that led me to something called dividend growth investing. That led me to a quote by Warren Buffett, which is my all-time favorite quote, where he said, if you don't find a way to make money while you sleep, you will work until you die. Alice, meet the rabbit hole. I went down it and I have not come back up yet. I couldn't believe it. So here I am for a second night, lying wide awake, people are sleeping, and I'm trying to figure out if I'm going to put even more money into Helios and Mathis. And at this point, I think I'm down almost $800, just kept putting more money in, and they just kept dropping. So what Warren was saying, make money while I sleep, as right now I was losing money and losing sleep. Now my grandfather, who I was very close with and had passed away in 2006, I never remember hearing him talk about losing sleep because of his investments or any of his stocks. So I said, this has got to change. There's got to be a better way. I can't keep losing sleep and lying awake at night, biting my nails to know what's going to happen when the market, the pre-market opens at 3 a.m. So took that into consideration. The next day I was faced with that choice, put more money into Helios and Matheson or do something different. I chose the do something different. Now, this is the beautiful thing that, yes, I lost probably about, you know, $800 on Helios and Matheson, but I learned such an important lesson. Uh, it put me on a different path, and that was the tuition I had to pay to the market to learn for myself how to become a dividend growth investor and share some of these lessons with you. So I had a choice, put more money into Helios, or do something different. Now, because I was still in the frame of mind that share price meant cheap stocks, and by the way, share price and company fundamentals aren't always linked. They can be different. If the overall market is crashing and dropping and people are selling, that says nothing about the company. That's just the price that the company is trading at. That has little to do at that point with the fundamentals of the company in general. So always remember that that know what game you're playing. I'm playing the long game. I'm buying for decades. I'm not just buying stocks. I'm buying family heirlooms to pass down to future generations and hope that they will continue to receive the passive income that uh, I'm building here. And it's very powerful and very liberating. So I had that choice. What am I going to do? Going to buy Helios or am I going to do something different? I almost missed my mouth. My God. So I did something different. Ta-da! So, oh yeah, the 3 a.m. So you get the 3 a.m. now. I don't think I pointed that out. Did I? I don't know. Anyway, we're wrapping up here. What I did, I bought my very first intentional dividend growth stock. Now, during swing trading, I had noticed uh, that I would buy a company when I was trying to swing trade and there was a few that paid dividends and after I sold them, they, I got the dividends from it. And I remember thinking, that's eh, only, you know, 38 cents or something, but didn't even think or consider the power of compounding, the most powerful machine we know, the one that once it starts and you start it, get out of its way, just give it more fuel, don't shut it down, don't fiddle with the knobs. So I intentionally bought AT&T, my very first dividend stock. And potentially that's why I have a soft spot for AT&T, although I have researched it and I do like what they're doing with the spinoff into discovery and really focusing on the telecom business. So not the point of this video, but that is what I did. And again, there was more mistakes. I was still messing around with penny stocks. And as we talked about swing trading and that swing trading, I didn't like it. Because that one company that I bought and sold was Merck after the dividends. And it went up like another 3 or $4 a share after I sold it. So I knew swing trading wasn't for me. Penny stocks, there is no get rich quick. What I want to do 
is buy and hold these great companies that I'm never going to sell unless one of two things happens. My thesis for investing in them changes or if the core fundamentals of the business are changing. If one of those two things happens, it's probably time to get out. But if that doesn't happen, I'm buying and holding. I can do this. I can get attached to stocks that I can buy, hold, never sell, collect and reinvest those dividends until one day we'll use those dividends to pay for things that we do, whether it's trips or bills or food, whatever it may be. But right now, we're in high gear compounding, making that dividend growth portfolio grow. And I am happy to be sharing this each and every week with you on the channel. And what we're going to do is we're taking a little bit of a step back here. I've been thinking about things and I have several buckets of videos that we're going to be doing for you. It's going to be more intentional and it's all focused on why why you should be investing is to build that passive income for tomorrow, but you're doing that today. You're taking actionable steps right now today to be able to have money coming in while you sleep in the future, which is so incredibly powerful. I just wish I would have started this when I was younger, when I was in my 20s, but I didn't. It was my really late 30s, right on the cusp of being 40, and that's what we're doing here. And I hope that you would consider subscribing to the channel if you'd like to join me on this journey. If you would like to learn more about dividend growth investing, I'll be doing giving beginner tips, giving stock analysis for beginners, things that I've looked at and vetted that I think would be good for a dividend growth portfolio. And I lightly touch on some crypto, but that is not the focus of the channel. And when I do, it is passive income. It's ways I'm generating passive income with crypto. So I hope you enjoyed this. Please let me know what you think of this. What is your story? How did you uh, get into dividend investing? I'd love to hear it. And if you are an absolute beginner, I had a friend uh, ask for some advice. So I did a six part series on some of the things we've done on our journey to financial independence, which you can check out right here. I hope you will enjoy that. Let me know and I will talk to you there.